Okay, JID just dropped a brand new project, The Forever Story, and we're gonna analyze it from what I think is a pretty cool angle. We're gonna look at uh, flow switches, vocal tone switches, and singing, because I actually think that The Forever Story has confirmed what I've been saying and feeling for the last four years. He, he is, if not the best, then absolutely one of the best technical MCs active right now, because yes, he can rap fast, but he doesn't just rely heavily on the, the rapidy rap. You know, there's far more strings to JID's bow than just just rapidy, rapidy, rap fast. You know, he really, I feel, embodies the true meaning of the word MC. He's not just a rapper, he's a supreme vocalist, able to bend his voice around pockets in the production that you never even knew existed. And he switches effortlessly between flows, dropping into legit singing voices when the occasion calls for it. And the Forever Story is an example of an artist leveling up their songwriting in a major way. This is by far JID's most cohesive and extravagant body of work. One that's slowly unfurling into a masterpiece as people are sitting with it and experiencing it over and over again. Now there are three main techniques, three main techniques that I've analyzed. Uh, we've got the singing percentage, we've got his flow switches and his vocal tone switches because this is something JID is well known for. You know, I've run analysis on his flow switches on his previous two records and people always love those analyses. You know, they always go viral when I post them. Now incredibly, incredibly on the forever story he switches his flow more than he ever has before and i say incredibly because listening to this project it's not jarring you know the switches don't jolt you out of the listening experience i would even argue this is the smoothest i've ever heard jid rap on a full-length project before but on the forever story he's actually switching up his flow every 14 seconds that's a new flow every 14 seconds there's an epic 9.25 flow switches per song on average now if you compare this to the never story we got a switch every 17 seconds and dicaprio 2 we got one every 25 seconds so there's a big discrepancy there now a good question to ask is how this compares to other rappers because some of the points i'm about to make will be further enhanced with a little bit more context so let's put the forever story into that context in terms of flow switches on a whole project the only only rapper I've found to equal JID was Logic on No Pressure. They're equal with the most, a flow switch every 13.9 seconds. That means JID is switching his flow more often than Young Thug, Rico Nasty, Lil Uzi Vert, Eminem, Lil Wayne, which is insane. That's insane. He's at the top of the tree. He kind of drops back in the middle a little bit. Well, he, he ranks third for vocal tone switches. You know, I've got Young Thug and Rico Nasty both switching their vocal tone up more, but JID is third. He's right up there as well. So I want to get into the flow switches first because you know a lot of people were DMing me and asking me for this analysis and uh, you know I think it's a it's it's a quality that a lot of people attribute to JID. A lot of people say that that's one of his defining qualities as an MC uh, and not one that holds him back at all and that's what I really want to get into. I want to talk about how he manages to keep his song smooth and maintains that like kind of like honey like flow you know he just kind of envelops the track, despite the fact he's switching his flow up so often. So we're gonna start with Radar, which has the second most flow switches adjusted for time on the project. And I think it's a good place to highlight the analysis because it's kind of like JID gets bored or he kind of gets overcome with the desire to switch. Like halfway through his first verse, he slips into a new cadence. Then he drops four separate flows in the second verse, but it's really the sprawling final verse after that beat switch which there were quite a lot of beat switches on this record, by the way. Yeah, a lot of people were saying to me that they thought that this was probably the most beat switches they've heard in a really long time. And you know, it's not a JPEG Mafia album, but there were definitely a lot of beat switches here. But in the final verse of Radar, uh, often the changes are quite subtle. So for example, 12 bars into the third verse, he starts heavily emphasizing the third or fourth last word as well as the last word of the bar, which creates this slow flow drawl effect. And then within five bars, he switches that emphasis to even earlier in the bar, which again shifts his flow and creates this beautiful effect where it kind of feels like he's splitting his bars like right down the middle and giving him this, this like double time rhythm, like this double time rhyme scheme, when really he's actually just subtly doubling the words that he places emphasis on. And you can hear him like slowly ramping up throughout this verse into a proper double time. 
And by the time we get to the word majority, he's basically doubled his speed. And it, it just happens so naturally and organically. He doesn't just switch into double time. You can feel it progressing through. Then we get another beat switch, which takes him in an entirely new direction. In the second half of the verse, he is absolutely skating switching his vocal tone up constantly. It's kind of morphing in and out of different pockets he's finding on the beat. You know, he rarely goes more than four bars with the same flow on that verse. And that's kind of a trend on this album. The songs that have more uh, vocal tone changes and more flow changes, they tend to change after four, four bars. The fifth bar is usually the one that changes, but it's the final track that takes the flow switch plaudits. A flow switch every 7.8 seconds, which is almost double the average of the album, and these are super subtle. You know, we get three within the first nine bars. He starts off in one direction, then quickly begins heavily elongating his bars. He works through the joy, void, voice, noise rhyme scheme before changing his vocals up in the ninth bar and absolutely losing his mind. He's morphing flows every few bars at this point, running out ahead of the beat, then allowing it to overtake him. He stuffs like 1.5 or even two times the syllables into a single bar. Sometimes he just adds two extra words at the end of his bars to create an entirely new rhyme scheme. In the 17th and 18th bars, he goes from rhyming the all sound to keeping that rhyme, but then adding okay cool and paid dues right after it. But again, he only does this for two bars. Then he removes that technique and goes straight back to the all sound at the ending of the bars. It's, it's you know, it really throws you from, from flow to flow. And he does a similar thing at the start of the second verse. He begins by ending his bars with the more sound rhyme. Uh, and then he keeps that, but he adds vigils, widows, kiddos to create an entirely new flow. And it means he has to slightly increase his speed to stay on beat, but that's one of those like really subtle changes that JID has. You know, I keep listening to these songs and looking at these changes and thinking, it's got to sound disjointed or clunky at some point. You know, there are rappers who sound like they're like wrapping their arm out of a bear trap every time they're changing their flow. You know, it's messy, it's, it's shouty, it's, it's obvious. But with JID, it's, it's never the case. You know, it's, it's just smooth, man. It's so smooth. The other song I want to quickly highlight with regards to flow switches is Money, because the time signature on that track is really weird. It's halting. It feels quite jolty in comparison to the other instrumentals in the album with really really slip by with ultra smoothness, but money has a jarring quality to it. Now, if you listen to the way J.I.D. elongates the second half of his bars at the start of the first verse, because there's like a big gap in the beat uh, where like the percussion kind of has a little bit of a stretch and a bit of silence there. And to, to overcome that, J.I.D. pastes over it by stretching his words out, but yeah, that's only the first four bars. Then the fifth bar, he's already switched, and he chooses to fill that extra silence with extra syllables. So the first four bars, he averages 14 syllables per bar. The next four, he adds half a syllable per bar to cover the extra speed. Then we get four bars in, then he switches it up again. This time he elongates the final word of the bar to cover up that gap in the beat. I wanted to break that section down because I think it shows that J.I.D. isn't just switching flows to say he can switch flows. You know, it's kind of, it's adding something vital to every song. And the changes are often so subtle that you're not even aware of them. You know, it's, I think it's part of why this album sounds so incredibly fresh the more you listen to it, because your brain's not gonna be able to pick up on all these flow changes unless you're sitting there like me with Excel spreadsheet open and a pen and you're writing everything down. You, you just can't pick up on that. You know, you, there's so many other parts of this record, you know, the lyrics, the beat, the vocal tone, the narrative, but I've found artists who are capable of shifting their flow this much often make music that I gravitate back towards regularly and they make songs that I play almost all the way through you know I, I'm not skipping them regularly because there's these little twists and turns and they create different textures and they make a song far more fascinating across repeat listens so then we get to vocal tone switches which is another thing JID has been incredibly adept at in the past now on this record the forever story we get one every 16.6 seconds and almost always these accompany a flow switch they're obviously not every single flow switch is accompanied by a vocal tone change. As you can see from the statistics, there are far more flow switches than vocal tone switches on this record. Now a tone switch 
is a much easier concept to hear than explain. It's actually just a quality that your voice has that makes it sound unique. So I wanna focus on star so I can bring this to the fore and show you what I'm talking about. Uh, so Stars has double the tone changes as it does flow changes, which is rare on this record. It also features 26% of JRD's vocals sung. Now I'm gonna say this, uh, with these kind of analyses into vocal tone, I very rarely do them for actual singers because the changes are really constant, sometimes three or four in a single word. You know, when, when if you go listen to Renaissance by Beyonce, for example, she is changing her vocal tones up like constantly. It's very, Lizzo's album, Lizzo's album is a great example as well. Now, Stars was a very difficult song to analyze from this perspective. It felt like J.I.D. had his vocals on like a mixing board and he was kind of using a slider to pitch his vocals up and down. So rather than having distinct points where he switches, they kind of slide, especially in the first verse, from low to high, up and down. Now, uh, exceptions to this, for example, are the fourth and fifth bar. There's a very perceptible change. And then of course, the switch from the verses to the chorus, which is very perceptible. But what I love about this song is how different his vocals sound in general, even where there seems to be no effect on them. The first four bars of the second verse, for example, there's no electronic help to pitch them, but he's rapping in such a different voice, it's almost not recognizable as J.I.D., but by the fifth bar, he's back into his normal tone, and by the tenth, he's lowered his tone naturally before we get a sung bar, before allowing his vocals to unfold in the second half of the verse. And I think if you listen to that second verse, you'll understand what I mean by the concept of vocal tone, especially those first four bars, and then getting into the fifth bar. Uh, because those first four bars are, you know, if, if I heard those and didn't know who was rapping, them, I'd be like, oh, I'm not really sure that that's J.I.D. But the fifth to the 10th bar is definitely J.I.D. So that's a great example of what a vocal tone is. Now we can talk about Brudenham because, you know, it has the fourth most changes on the album behind Stars and the final track and Radar. Now, another song with a huge amount of singing, which accounts for some of the switches here. 51% of J.I.D.'s vocals are sung on this track, which is the third highest on the record. And this is why I say J.I.D.'s singing voice is actually incredibly adept because the vast majority of vocal tone changes happen during the post-chorus, and it's really actually not easily to switch so seamlessly as J.I.D. does on here, because look, if you can't sing, you can't sing. I can't sing. My sister's an opera singer, so I grew up around uh, people who could sing. You know, I, I grew up understanding what singing was from a technical standpoint. I mean, she studied it. She went to university and studied being an opera singer. So changing your pitch and tone quickly without clunkiness is one of the hallmarks of a very good singer. Now, I don't detect any autotune out of the JRD's vocals or any outside help at all. And I think this is a great time to discuss his singing on this record because 20% of his vocals on the Forever Story are sung. And it was actually around 2018. He started speaking a little bit more about the ability he has during an interview in Brussels in 2018 entitled A Polaroid Story. He said he discovered he could sing when he was crooning along to Frank Ocean and the Arctic Monkeys. He was just a bit of a bet you look good on the dance floor. Don't know if you're looking for romance or... See, I can't, I can't sing. J.I.D. can sing. I, I can't sing. But then in an interview with SK Vibemaker, also in 2018, he said he planned on improving his singing voice and was genuinely considering releasing an R&B EP one day in the future, so that might still come. Then there was an interview with Complex to promote this record, The Forever Story, and he actually said he had to get a singing coach and he expressed his desire to sing at the highest level. You can definitely feel how much he's already leveled up from The Never Story. You know, we get tracks like Hereditary and All Bad on that record, which aren't poorly sung, but on The Forever Story, honestly, he has no issues vocally whatsoever. There's no cringy moments or clip vocals or off-pitch sections. And I think this record, I, I wanted to highlight these things because to me, it's the supreme smoothness that's so impressive on here because I think J.I.D. has crafted something special. It just flows around you. And I would love to analyze the lyrical content if I have more time and give a proper review. But, you know, having listened to it 20 times, and sat with the lyrics and run through them, I think this is by far his strongest offering. And I really hope it's a sign of things to come content wise, because you know, J.I.D. exploded into the stratosphere early this year with that Imagine Dragons collab, which actually sent his monthly Spotify listeners above J. Cole for the first time in their careers. And I'm certain that kind of exposure could tempt an artist to lean into that fully. 
you know, to start making a music with an eye to popping up more on pop focus charts. And JID could easily do that. You know, he's beloved by the industry and I'm sure it's well within his ability to craft a hot pop rap song. I mean, First Class by Jack Harlow went number one this year. Like it's, it's not, it's clearly not that difficult and JID is very, very adept. But on this record, he chose not to do that. He gave us a true body of work. He didn't stack it with epic features. You know, every feature on here really complements their track and he hasn't gone for big pop hooks or flashy instrumentals. You know, the beats are firmly rooted in J.I.D.'s sonic history and he's chosen to give us a huge part of himself on this record and I think he must be commended for that. I think this album will get better in time and I don't have any doubt about that. I... I think it's a brilliant record. I hope that this analysis has deepened your understanding of his uh, artistry a little bit more. You know, normally I don't do these. Normally I don't explain in depth where they come from, but I wanted to do that for J.I.D. because, yeah, I think he sets himself apart from the other artists that I've done this analysis for, you know, with the flow switches especially. Those artists are very, very obvious when they're switching flow. It's almost like they're winking at you and being like, Hey, see, I just switched the flow again. Get it? Like, J.I.D. doesn't do that at all, man. It's just never like that. And uh, I really appreciate him for that. And yeah, the Forever Story, like, I think I'm going to be coming back to this album repeatedly. This is my second favorite album of 2022 so far uh, behind Mr. Morales. It's a brilliant album. 